uh, what we learned about uh, before was the extension of the uh, river channels and uh, the separation of uh, the a de a definition of what the catchment is and the separation of the catchment in parts. As I have just said, also these parts are in this case based just, just on geomorphology. And the, the, the talk I am giving now is also talking about geomorphology. Uh, but obviously there is an open road beyond geomorphology because uh, at the same time uh, I will talking here about geomorphology, you can insert other processes in the landscape, like uh, uh, process type of vegetation uh, connected to the soil moisture formation and other things. But the idea is that we have, or you have, uh, to find a w the way to, to understand which are the, the important separation of the landscape that are needed in your work. But anyway, we go on geomorphology, because it's the thing that I know the best. What is a catchment then? Let's say that 30 years ago, the vision of a catchment was uh, simplified by this picture here, which is due to uh, David Schum. And uh, essentially you have three parts in a river. The mountain part, which is the runoff generating area. Rainfall uh, happens more or less on the mountains, much less on the plain, because on the mountain you have the orographic influence of, uh, of, uh, of rainfall. And so uh, at least on the first uh, mountain belt along the way of the Perturb uh, perturbations of the rainfall, you have the rainfall. And so here you, you have the generate the runoff generating area. Then you have all this connection. You you saw that the, the river network is a dendritic form that has peculiar also statistics statistics and topologies. Is a fractal actually? or what a fractal means in uh, natural science, which is not a mathematical fractal. There's some scales, some scale variance for a certain amount of scales up there. <coughs> it's still a dendritic structure, structure also in the middle. Here you are in the plane, but here the slope are small, around uh, one meter, uh, one meter a very, uh, Every, every kilometer, one over a thousand slope, very small. Uh, you, you don't have very much uh, sediment uh, generation. Sediment generation is all over the mountain. And uh, you mostly transport the water and sediment there. And so the dynamic is uh, kind of completely different. Water is just transported. And at the end, you have the delivery of the, of the catchment uh, to the sea, with, to a delta, or to estuaries, or things, or to a, le or, or to a big lake, doesn't make, make any difference from this point of view. The three parts uh, function a little bit different. So here is where people from hydraulics work. They pretend also to have a work on that there, but usually they are too limited in view. <laughs> in the sense that <laughs> hydraulics means uh, confined water. And you then don't, uh, don't have to confine water over there. And so this is the, the, the view of the catchment. How this church and uh, and uh, velocity, water depth, water width goes along uh, along this type of catchment, uh, seeing as why. And this is also explaining to how why doing the analysis, the morphological analysis we are doing is so important. 
Uh, there are this revelation by Leopold and Maddock around the, the middle of the last century that says that, okay, the discharge more or less is proportional to the uh, contributing area. Now we have a precise definition of what the contributing area is, and I told you that the contributing area is the projection of the area, is not the real surface area. They say that the, the discharge is proportional to the areas to a certain exponent c. Which discharge? They were referred to mainly to two discharges. Discharge is discharge is varying any time. So they were saying to the mean annual discharge and to the back foot discharge. Meaning when the flood is filling the banks. Both of them have the same law, but with different maybe exponents. What is the velocity of a of a of water in channels. Uh, if I t uh, ask you, is channel uh, uh, the water uh, moving faster on the reels on a hill slope, or is moving faster on on here on the same more or less on the plain, the valley, the Alge Valley from? This point of view is a plane. Obviously, hill slope. Sorry? Hill slope. Where there is a steeper hill slope. Yeah. This is not actually true. Really? <laughs> yes. This is not actually true in the sense that uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, in normal condition, maybe this can be true. But uh, as I was telling before to one of your colleagues, uh, uh, there are three factors that works to introducing the velocity. The slope, Distance. the friction on the bottom, uh, which means the roughness. Uh, the friction of the bottles means two things. Uh, the, the roughness of the bottom and the extent of the bottom. So the ri rivers are uh, changing their size their slopes and the material inside the, their bed in a way that velocity is maintained more or less constant. But if there is some increasing in velocity, this is increasing downstream on the mean. Because downstream the sediment is much more finer than on top. So there you have a lot of uh, roughness. Now we, we could do much more clear measurements. Say uh, the, the, the other, uh, and, and water, uh, as I was saying, is essentially not accelerating, but going uh, from the mountain down to the, to the flow. OK, it's a little bit accelerating. But most of the uh, kinetic energy is dissipated. Otherwise, we should have the, the water going uh, at uh, like a, a Formula One car at the, at the end of the thing. The bandwidth also depends on the contributing area. This is an extraordinary law because uh, uh, for all the rivers in the world, the disproportionality of the bandwidth when the river is natural with 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 the contributing area goes with a certain exponent b, b which is very close to 0.5 and uh, the bank full discharge depth meaning the depth of the water of the water there are simply locally you can have uh, uh, you know the the bank is going to narrowing then the velocity is accelerating then is enlarging the, then the water is decelerating but globally, you have to think this low as global type of global law. And the back foot discharge also is D is F. So because the discharge is velocity times the section area, which is width times that, you have combined those exponents. So you have to M plus B plus F is equal to C. 
approximately. This is the table by Leopold and Maddock. So you see B is, output, is extraordinarily close to 0 0.5 at all scale in all the rivers of the world. And there are works in literature that say that even reels reels in the on the on the surface not even form network have those exponent close to 0.5 f is 0 0.4 and m m is the increasing or decreasing of velocity with contributing area is positive so it's increasing downstream and f is close to 0 0.1 because water is essentially not accelerated. This is uh, another relation between discharge and areas that we uh, analyze some simulation in the river here, and you see the power law is pretty well explained. So, uh, behind the previous law, the idea is that okay, when we know the topography, we know it enough, we know we know something. Not enough, maybe, but something about what is going on in the video. Uh, the other thing is uh, ma this fractal, the algorithm nature is mathematical, is fitting a fractal. Non error rebound. I don't know what. Uh, um, uh, is mathematical, is fitting a tree. The, 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 the river network is mathematically speak, speaking a tree. And the element of, uh, of this tree have a topology. This topology was used in the past to formulate what are called with the stream law numbers or Orton laws networks. And essentially, they works like with this one. This is the, always the same network that I extracted before. And uh, you see here the, what is called the uh, orton strahler number, meaning you, we have the headwaters. The headwaters are numbered by one, strahler order number one. When two strahler order number one match for the strahler order number two, the, the, which is the uh, um, light blue ones. When two Strahler order of number two meets, they form a, a Strahler order of number three, and so on. When two Strahler order of different, uh, two stream of different Strahler order meet, they continues the, the, the stream of the larger Strahler order. So there you have, for instance, Strahler order number three, which where you have, uh, which is continue, continuing uh, when uh, Strahler order number two is going inside. Of these streams, what uh, you can say, we can count the number of Strahler order of number one, number two, number three, number four. You can uh, uh, look at the um, length of the stream of Strahler actually the average length of Strahler order stream of, of number one and so on, number two and number three. And then you can see, you can look also at the slope of each stream, the difference in elevation divided by the length by this stream, and you can obtain some laws. Always the planar length, the planar projection of the length. So these are the, the Strahler order, etc. In in general, the the law for giving a Strahler order <coughs> is the maximum between m and m plus one. So we count the number of the streams, and we call n omega, the number of a stream of uh, order omega. And we can build a ratio, which is the bifurcation number, 
which is the number of stream of order omega minus one divided the number of, of omega. Uh, you have to remind that the low order streams have the larger number. So if you have omega minus one equal to one, and you have uh, on the bottom you have an omega equal to two, and uh, one. Then if you put omega equal to uh, three, you have two, uh, Rb two divided, uh, number of stream of order two divided by number of stream of order three. The nice thing is that all over the world, this ratio are around four or five. And this look like, uh, a strange thing is called bifurcation laws. It looks like that every uh, river in the world is observing these these uh, characteristics. What about the drainage area? I, I told about the length of the streams, but you have also the drainage area going into that stream, the total contributing area absorbed that stream. You can consider the average for each order omega because you have many of order one, many of order two. You take the average area and you build the, the uh, bifurcation area, which is the area of the order omega, which is larger, <coughs> divided by the area of the order omega minus one, which is smaller. And the area and the bifurcation area is also around four for all the rivers in the world. And uh, you can consider the average slopes and doing the, what is called, is called is, this is called a Horton ratio, but actually it was Shun uh, established this, uh, these things. They were all things that were easily measured on maps. And now we can do, they, kind of lose importance uh, in the last 20 years because uh, we now do work on DMs, directly on digital elevation models, so we have different way also to see and manage the catchments. So we have the average of slope and the, the slope law uh, say that uh, the duplication, uh, the, 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 the <coughs> coefficient is close to two. So these are called, uh, uh, globally these are uh, called Horton Law. Horton Law says, oh, all the rivers in the world have bifurcation ratio around four, all the rivers uh, in the world have a length ratio equal to two, all the rivers in the world have the area ratio equal to four, and all, all the, <coughs> and uh, all the, the, the catchment in the world have uh, the slope ratio also around 1.5 to 1. You can also do different statistics actually uh, on the catchment. And one is, uh, um, we, we, we saw before the width function and we associate the width function to the some kind of the time that the water can go to the outlet, which is now more justified because uh, the, the Luna Leopold and the methods tell us that the velocity of water is not varying so much along the network. So if the velocity is a constant, the equal distance means equal times to arrive to the, to the catchment outlet. And that gives us a need how to calculate at least in channels what is the hydrological response? There are other law because if you take this distance here, this is this uh, here is a different. You, you sit in a point here and you go to estimate the distance, not to the outlet, but to the divide up there, which is kind of the reverse of the same law. Yeah. And then uh, uh, you say, uh, so in the point you have the length of your mainstream on, on top of you and the area on top of you. 
and you can ask uh, if there is any relation between the length of the mainstream and the area you have on top. And there is this arc law that say that uh, also this quantity is varying with the, the length of the mainstream is varying with the area and the exponent h is equal to 0.56 0. 0. Uh, for all the catchments in the world. For here is point, point four four, but nothing matters. So what the hell are those laws? Uh, those laws uh, uh, has to do with the organization of the river network, and we can easily estimate with the tools uh, given us by GIS, and give insights also on the forming law. For who is interested, uh, all this information is well conveyed in this fundamental book by Ignacio Rodriguez in Turbe and uh, Andrea Rinaldo. He's uh, in more than 20 years old the book, but uh, it's still uh, work to be read. There are a lot of uh, information. This figure is mine. Oh my. <laughs> this figure is mine from my PhD thesis. Other quantities that can be related to uh, to the, the geomorphology we are able to estimate is the drainage density. Maybe you mentioned some sometimes uh, sometimes this quantity is mentioned. This uh, the drainage density is the length of the channels you have on top divided by the area. The more channel you have on top, the more higher is the drainage density. Also, this was used to say, for instance, uh, there are terrain which are very, very, very granulated, very, um, have a very small catchment, like badlands, for instance, where you can distinguish sub catchments of some meters. And other that are larger, so uh, you can think that uh, uh, the presence of channel is a way to de deplete out water outside from the catchment more faster. And then the higher the drainage density, the higher is uh, the, the the flood response of the catchment according to the distance. And you can calculate the drainage density as this one. A again, this quantity is a uh, uh, everywhere present in literature because uh, it was uh, not easy but was it was measure measurable on maps and um, there is a work by Horton that says that the drainage density is related to the mean length of the of the of the hill slope it, it, and therefore is that related if you want to the uh, average time uh, water is spending on a hill slope. Actually, with our tools, we can draw the drainage density like this one. There are a lot of papers in the 90s and before that uh, argue about drainage density. This was for this uh, uh, resemblance to hydrological response. And I mentioned in, uh, uh, and, uh, and they were, but usually those papers make the simplification that drainage density was held constant through a certain catchment, a certain lithology or certain geology. Here is uh, the exact representation of the, of the drainage density, as, as you see, is varying in some cases a lot. But in any case, the drainage density obviously has a jump at the beginning of the, of the network. It's not so, it depends, can vary. And uh, it was used because it was a thing measurable on maps. It was giving you some idea about how the catchment was answering 
But this is whole stuff. When we didn't have the DS, you can find, I mentioned to you because you can find in literature, but it's not actually any more <coughs> useful to us because we, for instance, and we can, we are able to estimate the distance from any point to, to the channel just with the GIS, with the amount of the tools we are, we are, I am uh, proposing to you. And this is a, this is essentially a view of the distance to channels, which is supposed to be the inverse of, uh, of the drainage density, according to the stochastic theory by Horton. More or less, we actually, I never did the, the comparison. Just, I can just invert this one, can do the comparison with the previous one, and see what happens. But actually, I didn't do it any time. And so we can do statistics. When you have the hill slope, you can calculate the average uh, slope length, the average length distribution, the distribution the average length of a stream, the average uh, drop in slope along the stream, and so on. Now, every, everything of these things from the EMs is available to you, and you can use for your purposes, if you think that it has some importance in the work you are doing. Another step in the things that we were uh, analyzing before, uh, meaning the process is acting on the landscape, is trying to see what happens of these points in the catchment uh, when we put in some uh, graphs, for instance. For instance, here we have slope on the, on the y-axis and uh, we have a contributing area in the x-axis. And uh, uh, the graphic is, is log log. And the graphic was uh, done by David Bob, the same names that uh, I mentioned before, from Motto, Rodriguez Tuber, Rafael Brass, all these guys who did it in the, uh, our discipline in the first year of this century and the last years of mm -hmm. the last century. So one one interesting thing is that we have, we have this cloud of points, slope, and if you take the average here, meaning that you take some points along a beam, you do some beaming, and then you take the average inside the beaming, and then you uh, join the beaming, you see that there is a power law for some point. And in particular, this power law goes to A to the minus 0.5. And if you go on the field and you identify this point, you realize that this point are the, which are the points with the largest area are all inside the channel. So it seems to be a natural relationship inside the channels between the slope of the channel and, and the contributing area in the channel like, that goes like minus 0.5. And one can ask if uh, this law is some, somewhat related to the Horton laws that I showed you before, where I say, oh, we can calculate this ratio of slopes that goes to 1.7 or so. And this is related, and the answer is in the book. Another uh, relation that you can have from morphology, I am trying to convince you that something of the process is written in the morphology if you look well and you have your eye trained you can see which is the what is happening on the landscape it's always this one now actually the is the same the same quantity is that before the slope that now is in the x-axis and the area that now is on the y-axis and I actually use this sometimes, this, uh, this picture on to the axis reversed. And this is a quite famous thing because you say, okay, 
if I am uh, come from Mars, I land on on the landscape. Okay, hey, I'm here. What I am able to measure? I am able to measure maybe the area I have on my top and the slope of the place where I am. So I, I am also, according to this uh, thing here, the, we, I am not explaining the formulas. The formulas are obtained from pretty simplified hydrology. Uh, assuming steady state uh, flow of water, I say, okay, if I am here, I am a place which is stable, is do dominated by diffusion. If I am here, I am, uh, I am overland flow by saturation, which is called Dunning over overland flow. And uh, I have no erosion. If I am over there, I have erosion. If I am here, I have land sliding, meaning debris flow. So, According to this landscape and to this line of separation, just from topographic features, I can get a guess of which process is happening. Obviously, this separation <coughs> can move because they depend on parameters, and these parameters in turn depend on ecology, on, on vegetation, things. But are kind of a an approach that we, we, we can try to follow to understand what is going on. So the idea, the main idea is, uh, okay, we have these parameters in the landscape. Look, around the literature, there is a lot of information that relate topographic parameters to processes. Give a look to it. I, I was not in any case, uh, here um, comprehensive on this topic, I just wanted to do a short, fast uh, presentation of them. But the main message remains is in topography, there is written a lot. You, you, uh, you can do it. With the tools we are uh, learning today, besides separating the catchment and extracting the HRU, which is our main scope, uh, there is a possibility to understand a lot of, about processes. Questions? Curiosities? So, we are done. This part was vague, so. Sorry? This part was vague. 